before we get started on today's project, um, just a little thing to say, stick around till the end because I have some updates to my scheduling and just general chit chat. <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. Today's project is the dragon head, which I've seen quite a few people do. Um, and I've had this mold for quite a while now, but I decided I would do it and use the chameleon powders. Um, I usually put all the things that I use in my video in the descriptions box below the video. But I bought this from Amazon and they don't sell it anymore. And I've looked for it on Timu as well. And they sell the smaller version. So yeah, if you've already got this mold, then good for you. But if you haven't, it, these things used to be all over the internet. And <laughs> now of course I decide I'm gonna do one and <laughs> they've all disappeared. Anywho. Yeah, I decided that I would do this with the chameleon powders because I don't know how effective it would be dumping coloured resin in. So this was my go-to for this one. Very difficult to show you where I'm actually applying <laughs> the powder, but I guess you'll get a better idea of that when it actually gets unmoulded. And these are some of my favorite chameleon powders. They're made by a company called Alexis. And as I say, all the details will be in the supplies list in the description. So yeah, this takes quite a while. So that's why it's sped up so fast. <laughs> and with each color that you apply, if you don't want the previous color in a place, then clean it up with a wet wipe. Otherwise you'll get dirty colors. If you want to keep them all clean so that you can see the, the individual colors, then clean as you go. Now this dragon mold comes with um, a mold that you can do that makes a sphere, makes a little globe that you can stick on top of his head. Um, you'll see the divot in there. I tried to make the globe, but yeah, it didn't really work. I don't know what I did. Um, I filled the I filled the globe up with resin, but it sank down and there was a big hole in it. So I thought, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. I'll just decorate it and do my own thing, which is usually what I do anyway. <laughs> so just continue with your colors. I only chose four colors because I didn't want there to be too much of a mixture. I just thought that these colors were nice. And the mermaid's eyes. And I always want to call that Mermaid's Tears for some reason. I love that colour. I'd put that colour on everything. <laughs> so just keep going with your colours. And it's actually quite difficult to see, to visualise what it's going to look like. So I just picked lines where I could actually see um, they were separated from another part and just tried to get separate lines or colours in different spaces, if that makes sense. As I said, you'll, you'll get a better idea of what it actually looks like and how I've applied the colors when it's unmolded. When I put on all my colors, I just used a clean brush and went over the whole thing just to get any powders out of any lines where it wouldn't um, take and it would create a void. Now I've seen people do this and they've used the deep pour resin. I didn't have any and I've never used deep pour resin. This is just my regular Let's Resin resin. But it is a fairly deep mold. I did put it on my heated mat. I don't know if that helps to thin it out. And I also kept my resin on the heated mat so that it was a nice and thin consistency easy to pour and hopefully easy to get in all the little nooks and crannies because this thing has so many little nooks and crannies and because I've put mica powder on it uh, you can't really use any kind of tool to try and encourage the resin down inside so I did a little bit of squeezing and tapping and had my fingers crossed that it would actually work <laughs> but you know me with my usual 
method. I like to get the resin in there and squeeze it and pinch it and hunt down the bubbles and do all that stuff. But with this, it wasn't easy to do. So we will see in the end result. Sorry about the mini earthquakes. I always forget that my cameras are actually on my desk. <laughs> so you'll get a little mini earthquake now and then. Love those colours, how they blend together so nicely. And that gold, that mermaid's eyes, I can't say enough about that colour. I think it has to be one of my absolute favourite chameleon colours. You can see this is a fair size mould too. And everything looks good apart from, I don't know if you actually see it, um, around the back, uh, there were a couple of spots that didn't take. So I decided that I would show you how, if you get voids, to fix them with the UV resin and the mermaid's eyes, same chameleon powder. When you do this, apply your UV resin in small amounts so that you've got a little bit more control. I went a little bit crazy there and you don't want it running down the sides of your project. So do it clear to start with and go slowly, build it up, and try and get the shape that you want. Yeah, I don't think this little lamp was working, so I had to go over to something else. <laughs> That's why the change. A little tap to see if it's set. And then all I do is mix up a little bit of the UV resin with the colour, paint it on and set it. You might need to do a couple of layers, a couple of very thin layers, but you can do this um, especially with uh, moulds like this, where as I say they are so detailed and there are quite a few pointy bits, this comes in handy for solving those little voids. And it looks good as new. You, you wouldn't really be able to tell that it didn't come out properly in the mould. I decided to decorate my dragon. I love decorating things. I, I love to sort of stick stuff on and try and improve it. Just make it fun. Uh, these are a lot of the beads that I got. If you saw my Timu haul, that's where these came from. And I love these beads because they don't have any holes in them. Now you can either stick these down with super glue, but I find that it kind of burns off the color, or you can use this type of glue. Now this is one of my favorite glues to use, Beacon 3-in-1. It has a slightly tacky feel to it, so it is repositionable um, and it dries clear, and it's very strong. So this is my kind of go-to glue 
when I'm doing crafts. And I just had fun sticking the little beads on, cheering him up, making him bright and colourful. And where those three beads are on the top, you see that little divot? That's where the little sphere would have gone if I'd made, been successful in making the sphere. So I'm putting on some rhinestones as well. I used super glue for these, but if you have rhinestone glue, I think that would be better. And these are proper glass or crystal rhinestones. They're not the, the acrylic ones because they have no soul. They have no sparkle. These ones are sparkly and I love them. So yeah, I'm just picking up some super glue. Try not to stick myself, which I'm very good at. <laughs> yeah, and those pesky rhinestones, they are so tiny. <laughs> so difficult to pick up. And here he is. You can see I also put some gold pen on his eyes and around his eyebrows and his sort of cheek and upper eyelid. And I also put some little rhinestones on the back of his horns. That was fun, I did enjoy that. And even though I didn't use deep pour resin, I think it turned out perfectly. I am going to start posting every other week on my schedule, mainly because Gardening season is coming and I'm an avid gardener. I don't have a huge, huge garden, but what I do have takes me a long time because I'm slow. <laughs> so I have all my gardening things I want to do. Um, and I will also be joining Claire on her collaboration in her Crafty Corner, which will be on Saturday the 11th of May. So I'm looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, so I just thought I'd keep you up to date on that. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.